And today, we are going to have a, a lecture in the course media witnessing. And what is this course mean for? The, the key contents of this course. It basically means that nowadays, we all have a mobile phone, a camera-equipped mobile phone like this. So it means that everyone has the opportunities to document what happens on the ground, to upload it onto social media, to share with others. And this is something uh, some people argue, this is citizen journalism. It means that we have the potential for ordinary people to participate in the process of news making and news reporting and also news disseminating. And then, due to we have uh, digital media, we can also leave our own comments on news reports, our own expressions on public affairs, so we can always have a piece of opinion on the internet. And we can also share what we have with our networks, with our uh, friends and families and colleagues. With all those developments happens here. What does it mean to be journalistic practices to be, to, uh, today? And what consequences we will have in the formation and dissemination of public opinions? And ultimately, what is the shape of, of citizenship in today's societies? So these are the key questions we are going to explore in this course. And today, we are going to have this content. So with all those starting points, and uh, uh, outlines you have bear in mind. Today, we're going to talk about three things. What is digital vigilantism? And uh, what are social media's roles in digital vigilantism? And we have to critically evaluate the consequences of digital vigilantism. So these are the three parts of comments we're going to have in this 45 <coughs> minutes. And one footnote here is that uh, for the students, for the third year students, they need to prepare something for the lecture before they come into the class. They need to read articles. Of course, you don't have to, but I'm also uh, bringing the articles here so that you can see clearly the workload. This is like two articles, and I have counted. It's about 23 pages. So it means that in order to prepare a weekly lecture, that is two 45-minute sessions together, you need to read 23 pages. This is basically the average workload. It's not too much. So, what is digital vigilantism? So, what is vigilantism in offline environments? I will uh, ask you something. So, who knows Batman? What is the story of Batman? Who is he? And why does he become Batman? I'm going to ask a, a volunteer. If you don't volunteer, I'm going to volunteer you. Who knows it? Are you a fan of scientific fiction or not? Mm -hmm. The one volunteer one. <laughs> Maybe you, please. Could you tell us your name? Uh, Anna. Anna. Okay. Could you please tell us who is Batman and why does he become Batman? I don't really know, actually. <laughs> okay, then you can ask another person here. <laughs> Volunteer another one. Um. <laughs> Who can help her, maybe? No? Oh, yeah, please. Could you please tell us your name first? Uh, I'm Poppy. Poppy, okay. Please tell us. Um, that man, when he was young, his parents died. Yeah. And, um, he's very rich. He becomes a uh, superior by the age of mm -hmm. So when he was very young, his parents died, and he saw it. He saw the whole process of his parents' death. And then uh, he is, his family is actually very rich. And then he uh, adopted all the uh, wealth from his uh, family. And he is an entrepreneur, right? He's, he has his own business. But however, he also swore, he swore to that, OK, I'm going to fight against crime for the rest of my life, because I have saw the deaths of my parents, right? Thank you very much, Bobby. Let's sort it out a little bit, what happens. So basically, uh, in uh, his childhood, he witnessed uh, a traumatizing crime scene, that is the deaths of his parents. And he uh, tried to swear, OK, I'm going to fight against criminals by my own actions, with my own hands. Here we need to pay very, very uh, clearly attention here that uh, in a comic book series, not the films, I didn't watch the films, in a comic books, 
that uh, he actually went to FBI. He wanted to join FBI at the age of 20. But after he uh, stayed in the institution, he saw the regulations and also the ways of doing things of FBI. He said, OK, that's enough. I'm not going to be in the institution. This is not going to help the justice in our society. I'm going to do something with my own hand. And this is his decision. And of course, in order to fight against crime, he needs certain uh, skills, certain uh, techniques, basically. So he is American, and he came to European universities to study science and technology. And he also learned a lot of techniques, like uh, Kung Fu or martial arts, and also man hunting techniques, detective techniques. All these things try to prepare himself to fight against crime. And then he went back to his city. And uh, he became a, uh, a daytime. He is this entrepreneur and also playboy, rich boy, called Bruce Wayne. And at night, he is a vigilante Batman. So vigilante is someone like the Batman. So we can arrive at a definition of vigilante and vigilantism. Vigilantism means the practices of vigilante, right? So vigilante means the civilian or uh, private organizations who act in law enforcement without legal authority. So it means they do it in their own hands. And that is why in the films that the police always have a love and hate relationship with Batman, because he does not ha actually uh, has the authority to do so. <coughs> but what about this all happens on the internet? What about vigilantes and practices happens on the internet? We're going to see, a, watch a short video. And after it, I'm going to ask another one to, uh, another student to explain what happens in the video, okay? Hey, your dog just shit all over the carpet. That's nice. So what happens here? What happened? Another one? Raise your hands up. Uh, the one maybe behind. Yeah, please. The dog shit on the floor. Yeah, dog shit on the floor. So uh, has she, uh, she? She didn't take it up, right? She didn't pick it up at least uh, in time, right? And this whole process was witnessed by someone holding the camera. So here we need to think about the emotional perspective of, of this process. A man was walking back and he saw it. And he might feel really angry about it because how can you behave like that in public spaces? And he might feel being offended because not only because that's bad, bad public behavior, but also about the uh, good gesture, right? At this moment, the man began to feel, okay, I'm going to do something. I feel imperative and compelled to react to this situation. By doing what? By making this whole event visible to more people, to let more people to know what happens on the ground. And that is why he documented it and uploaded it on the YouTube. And as social media users like you and me, when we saw the video online, we may also feel very angry about it. How can you behave like that at the airport? This is the airport. And dog poop on the carpet, right? So we may feel, okay, we want more people to see it. Let's share it on Facebook, make other people to see bad public behaviors. And we may also express our own opinions towards what happens. For instance, how shameful you are. Or actually, someone may, may explain that she indeed picked it up afterwards, right? So we may leave comments and also thumbs down for it. And some of us may also be curious about who is she? Who is this anonymous girl at the airport? What type of nasty person can do this type of nasty thing, right? We might actually search about her. Who is she? And at this moment, <coughs> at this moment, we become the vigilante here. We didn't become Batman, we become keyboardman. Because we are doing something, we try to react to what happens here with keyboards, with typing in front of a computer, or with actually using digital media in a more general sense. And this is a case of digital vigilantism. Now, 
this we arrive at a definition of digital vigilantism. So it means that some wrongdoings are captured and transmitted by mobile devices on, the, on social media. And the users also feel uh, the moral outrage, feels angry about it. So they began to conduct mediated and collective actions so as to render the wrongdoer visible through information gathering. And this might uh, refer to public naming and shading. And also we may search the information on Facebook to get more private information, personal details about her. And also sometimes we may arrive at a real identity of someone. There might be an identity card revealed on the internet. So this is the moment that a digital phenomenon actually goes <coughs> offline. So it goes into uh, our everyday experiences actually. <coughs> and that is something like this picture shows that we are not only seeing something on the screen, actually we are also pointing our hands out of the screen. And in Chinese language, a uh, similar uh, phenomen phenomenon of public naming and shaming is called human flesh search. Human flesh search. We search information every day on digital media. However, we can also search human flesh. It means that the embodied uh, information, the real life information, the real identity of one person, someone might actually reveal the home address of that target, and someone might go to the home. To, to wait for the girl and conduct violent activities in person. This is something that happens uh, in an offline situation of digital vigilantism. Now we need to think about what type of role digital media has played in this kind of activities. Batman came to Europe to study all kinds of techniques. And what can be compared here is that we have all kinds of uh, affordances and helps of digital media. We're going to watch another uh, video so uh, you can see what happens in the video and also think about those critical moments that digital media are playing, critical roles and uh, digital media are playing. And the video is in foreign language, it's, it's in Thai language, so no worry, I didn't understand this either, but we have subtitles in it. ขึ้นลัวไม่ได้นะเนี่ยวะ
เฮ้ยเจดังแล้ววะสามวันล้านวิวทำอะไรกันสองคนวันวันไม่เคยทำงานที่มันมีประโยชน์เลยนะแล้วเลิกเล่นได้ทีไม่โทรศัพท์เนี่ยมาดิดไม่รู้วุ่นวายอะไรกับมันนักหนาไอ้โทรศัพท์พวกแล้ว
Another uh, affordance or uh, characteristics of digital media uh, is emotional contagion. It means that uh, one type of emotion will disseminate around one network. And this is something that is uh, tested um, by Facebook company already. Facebook company uh, published a uh, research in 2014, and the company said, okay, we get evidence already. Uh, there will be large-scale emotional contagion on our uh, Facebook page. It means that if you see more positive posts in your page, you will also tend to post positively. So if you see more negative things, you will post more negatively. And when you see so large amount of negative comments on that video, it possibly you will also post some negative comments on it. And this is a uh, characteristic of digital media to be emotional contagion. And then there is another thing we need to think about that did not show up in this video, but it showed up in the uh, dog poop dog video. When we want to search for her, when we want to know what happens, uh, who is she, we don't have to hack into her email account or hack into certain uh, uh, database. We don't have to. We can just uh, find her on Facebook. And in this way, we know clearly about her, who she is the education, working, or home details, because she, she might have posted that voluntarily by herself. And think about this. Self-disclosure and self-explosion are actually a huge thing on digital media. We are so happy to post something about ourselves in our private life, in our professional life, to share with other people. We, we love to do that. We are happy to do that, because self-branding is always good, right? People do not tell who you are, you tell them. This is a lovely thing. However, one day, if you become the target of digital, digital vigilantism, the private information that you voluntarily post on Facebook might become the weapon against you. So you cannot make sure that you private the audiences of your private information on digital media. So always think about it before you post. And this is also something related to the laws. I have checked that whether that's legal to reveal one's private information on the internet. I have checked the regulation in the United States, in European Union, and also in China. It turned out to be that it's totally illegal to reveal one's home address, to reveal one's identity card on the internet. That's illegal. However, if you direct a link to one's Facebook page, and he or she happened to make that Facebook page public, that is not private information, right? So this is the gray area, the gray area of our laws and regulations nowadays in our society. So again, think about your post and also take care of the privacy setting of your Facebook page, right? <coughs> and the last dimension here is that we need to think about the broader cultural context here. The industrial rhetoric of participation, sharing, and injunction. Let's look at the uh, mission statement of Facebook and Twitter. Mission statement basically means a goal of their business. So the goal of Facebook is to bring the world closer together. Well, the goal of them are not going to make some money. And of Twitter. So our mission is to give everyone the power to create and share ideas and information instantly without barriers. So imagine that if one day you are walking on the road and you saw something happens on the ground that might be potentially newsworthy and you may feel compelled to post it, to record it, because we are all supported and encouraged by this type of culture nowadays in our society. And this is a wider cultural dimension of digital media. And do you want to know what really happens in a market event? You want to know it? Is it something that like we see in the video? We're going to go back to the video to see what really happens. เก็บค่าเช่าเท่าเดิมเก่าใจเกินมาเนี่ยอยากจะขายต่อไหมอยากจะอยู่ต่อไว้ตลาดเนี้ยฉันบอกกี่ครั้งแล้วกบแต่ช่างเนี่ย
รักษาความเป็นธรรมเหมือนเดิมดูแลพวกเขาเหมือนเดิมต้องสังหารนายกให้หมดเลยขอบคุณมากเลยเจ๊ช่วยเหลือพวกเขาเหมือนเดิมเจ๊เหมาเองไม่เป็นไรยุ่ช่วยกันว่าไงเราขายไม่ดีเลยเหรอไปขายตลาดฉันไหมยังมีแผงว่างอยู่นะไปไหมล่ะช่วยให้เขามีที่ทํากินเหมือนเดิมทำทุกอย่างเหมือนเดิมข้าเช่าออสนึกว่าฉันลืมหรือไงไอ้แน่อะไรนะ่ะถังอะไรนะ่ะฉันบอกกี่หัวแล้วถังขยะอย่ามาไว้หน้าร้านไม่นี่ก็เหมือนกันโซ่ส์คอมเมอร์เชียลจากเซเว่นอีเลฟเอ็นดีคอนเวนิเอนซ์ตัว What happens here is that we tend to always see one side story. One side is always from what we see on the internet, because we may not have the patience to verify what really happens. And this was actually the job of journalism. So now it's time to think about the pro and the cons of digital vigilantism to see the consequences of it. We have already seen that we may be biased by what we have seen. However, if we um, move to another social critical context, we will think that okay, this is really difficult to judge. Actually, now we go to China. This is what happens in China. A uh, few years ago, uh, one local leader, one local official, was reported in the news, and then some social media users began to identify. Okay, that's really a nice watch. That's really an expensive watch. So. Uh, The media, social media user, posted the information on the online forum, and then other users began to search. Okay, let's look at what other type of watch <laughs> also has. He also has, and then a group of people began to collectively dig into the information, search on the internet, and they have found so many pictures, and it turned out to be he indeed has other type of watch, at least another eleven expensive watches, and it's in the brand of Longjin. Rolex Omega, and also really luxury, luxury and expensive ones. And people began to post that okay, this is not something he could afford with his salary. And then this whole event become really visible, become really trendy on Chinese social media. And then the local government began to take some action. Okay, let's let's check what happens in his office, in his position. And indeed, it was found that he has conducted some corruption. And this case was a case that social media users are celebrating because digital vigilantism like this can may be used as a useful tool to fight against the corruption. It's because this is again a mediated event. No one is actually going offline. They are just uh, searching for information, and it's also a collective practice because someone has the data mining ability to find so many pictures. Other. Others really know about the price and different models of expensive watches. So people collectively, using their intelligence, achieved at a goal of anti-corruption. So uh, this type of thing was really celebrated in China. However, at this moment, we should always think about. For the vigilantes, they always say, "Okay, we stand in the position. We stand together with justice." Right. This is also what Batman was saying that we, uh, he wants to uh, stand with the justice, bring back the justice in society. However, what is justice should be decided by constitution and court, not by private person, individual person like you and me. Right. This is actually the legal definition of digital vigilantism. Right. You shouldn't take justice. You shouldn't take law enforcement at your own hand. So when we think about the consequences of digital vigilantism, at least we can think from these two perspectives. Firstly, efficiency. Whether what we are doing is effective enough. Sometimes we may falsely identify something. Sometimes we may be biased by one-sided story, like the uh, uh, the boss in the vegetable market. Secondly, it's about proportionality. It's about yes, indeed, this guy has done something wrong, has is guilty and is a criminal. 
However, that crime should be proportional to the punishment he or she gets. And this process should be done by the court and legal system, not by individual person like you and me, right? If you uh, remember what happens in 2013 in Eindhoven, there was this case, Cops Hover case in Eindhoven. So a group of young people was going out at night and they mistreated and beaten another young man. And this whole thing was captured by uh, the surveillance camera. And they have been identified, uh, identified online and they have received so much negative comments, so much negative publicity online. And in the end, they actually got less sentences from the court because the court was considering that they have already got so much punishment by the negative social visibility on media. And this is the responsi responsibility of court to bring out proportional punishment, not by you and me. Now we move on to the summary here. So in this 40 or 45 minutes, we have uh, discussed what is digital vigilantism. It means that private parties, private organizations are uh, conducting law enforcement activities online and try to punish someone through public shaming <coughs> or public shaming. It might transfer to offline consequences. And uh, social media actually here uh, for both the organizational and moral dimensions of this type of behaviors. On the one hand, we have the technology and tools to do so. On the other hand, Social media's culture really encourage us to participate, to post uh, instantly, right? It is a culture that encourages us to do so. And in the end, vigilantism is illegal use of violence. So we should always think about before we post and before we uh, uh, conduct shame on someone, right? So in the end, Few success with your study at high school, and uh, I hope to see you on campus. Okay? If you have any questions, now we still have some question time.